Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, in, um, in reading the Gospel for today, it is very easy to miss a tiny detail, which, however, is very significant and very important, especially for church leaders and for those in positions of authority. So the reading starts by telling us of the journey of Jesus and his disciples through Galilee, a journey which Jesus wanted to remain a secret because this was the opportunity for him to be alone with his disciples and to instruct them. So he spoke to his disciples of his coming passion and death and resurrection. But the disciples did not understand what he was saying, and instead, among themselves, away from the hearing of Jesus, they spoke of worldly glory and success. But Jesus, who is God, and to whom nothing is hidden, knew exactly what they were talking about. And upon arriving in Capernaum, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the road? The question caught them off guard, and they remained silent out of embarrassment. Our Lord did not scold them because they were talking of glory and all of that. But instead, and here is this, the little detail which can be easily missed. Instead, he calls the 12 apostles to himself and helps them to understand wherein lies true greatness. He said, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. So the difference is this. At the beginning, on the journey, he was talking to all of his disciples, all his traveling companions. But when he wanted to speak about humility, he called the 12, those who were to be leaders in the church, those who were to become bishops and occupy positions of authority, he called them aside and said to them, if anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. So Christ admonishes the 12 apostles to cultivate humility and to be humble servants of all. Greatness in God's eyes is measured by humility and service to others. And as future leaders of the church, the apostles must shun all ambitions for worldly honor and praise. But instead, they are to seek to serve Christ in humility. Christ sets before his apostles the ideal of humble and devoted service, of which he himself gave the example. In the kingdom of Christ, in the church, there is no place for selfish ambition, and true greatness can only be measured by the degree of devoted service. The, cate the Catechism of the Catholic Church says, the Good Shepherd ought to be the model and form of the bishop's pastoral office. Conscious of his own weaknesses, the bishop can have compassion for those who are ignorant and erring. He should not refuse to listen to his subjects whose welfare he promotes as of his very own children. And the faithful, they should be closely attached to the bishop as the church is to Jesus Christ and as Jesus Christ is to the Father. And St. Peter gives this admonition in his letter. He says to pastors, tend the flock of God that is your charge, not by constraint, but willingly not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not as domineering over those in your charge, 
but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd is manifested, you will obtain the unfading crown of glory. It is inevitable that within the church, there will be members of the fold who will be difficult to handle. Now, if you like, you may call them the black sheep. The black sheep is someone who does not fit in with the rest of the group and is often, often considered to be a troublemaker or an embarrassment. Obviously, in the church today, there are some members of the fold who are regarded and treated as such. And it is natural that those who occupy positions of authority will tend to neglect or even force them out of the fold. Instead, Christ tells his apostles that in the church, he who is first, he who occupies the position of authority must be the servant of all, must cater to the needs of all, without exception. Our Lord stresses this point when he placed a child in front of the apostles and said, whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. And whoever receives me receives not me, but him who sent me. The child represents the humble, the unimportant, those who are neglected. No, among those, no, so these are the ones that the apostles are called to serve. Whoever receives such little ones with kindness for, for the sake of Christ, receives Christ and the Father who sent him. The great task of every Christian isn't to achieve fame and fortune, popularity, power, and worldly success. Rather, it is the same task which Christ himself undertook, to serve others, to make others happy, to reach out to those who are weak and in need, just like little children. Greatness in Christ's kingdom is equated with humility, an attitude of the heart that puts the good of others ahead of one's own preferences. It is self-giving, not self-getting. Christ doesn't say to his apostles, do not strive to achieve great things. Yes, these things are good, but then he points out to them where true lasting, fulfilling greatness lies in loving one's neighbor as Christ has loved them. Many of the saints we honor today were great men and women in their own time. They were not all perfect, but they all had one thing in common, the virtue of humility. Humility conquers the heart of God, and it is even greater than any exterior devotion we may practice. Humility is the mother of many virtues because from it springs obedience, holy fear, reverence, patience, modesty, mildness, and peace. Let us pray often for the gift of humility. Let us pray for this gift using the words of St. Francis de Sales. My dearest Father, I beg you, for the love of God, help me to humble myself. Let us ask for this virtue from the Sacred Heart by saying, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, make my heart like unto yours. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.